investment banking. We help uh, emerging growth technology companies with capital raises and M&A, including helping companies internationally come into the U.S. market and companies uh, here. Um, I'm here today with um, Sar Yoskovitz of Augury, a very cool company that uh, I look forward to sharing with you here. Um, why don't you start by giving a quick overview of, of the company? Sure. So at Augury, we listen to machines. And based on the noise that they make, we can tell if they're working properly, if they have a malfunction, and even what type of malfunction they have. We do this by attaching um, vibration sensors to your smartphone and then applying machine learning algorithms to the acoustic signal. So we're kind of like Shazam, but for machines. And, and what's the background? How did this come about for, for you? So I studied in the Technion um, electrical engineering and physics. And I mostly majored on speech recognition, which is machine learning on acoustics. Uh, at the same time, my co-founder, Gal, who's sitting right here, um, worked in a, a medical device startup. And they had this big medical device with moving parts, pumps and fans. And as the head of software, he was sent to India in order to figure out a bug that was preventing the machine from working. And he says that when he entered the room, he could hear that the, the fan is all clogged up. And as a software developer, he found himself cleaning out the filters. And then when he came back, he came back home, and he asked me, look, I heard it. Why can't my code, why can't the computer hear it? And that's how we got started. Because we see a lot of remote sensing capabilities. This seems to be a, a, a pretty unique approach to using um, sound and vibration remotely like you're doing. Are there, are there other companies um, doing this or... or um, and, and where, are you, where are you primarily focused right now? So this technology can be used across the board, uh, from industrial factories where you have the big expensive machinery, and all the way to your home when you have the washing machine, refrigerator, dishwasher. And at the end of the road, we want to be inside everything that has moving parts. Uh, initially, we're focusing on commercial facilities. So it could be an office building, hospital, shopping center, and more specifically on the HVAC systems which is a heating, ventilation, air conditioning of those systems. And you know, going back to your question, we're part of predictive maintenance, so we didn't invent vibration analysis. It's been done for over 20 years now, but it's stuck in the high-end markets. So if you have a um, wind turbine or jet engine, you probably do it today, but out of commercial facilities, only 12% of them are actually doing predictive. And the other 88% are throwing away billions of dollars every year on maintenance costs and energy costs. And the reason um, it's stuck in the high end is because the current systems cost uh, over $20,000 just for the data acquisition device. And it only gives you the raw data. So you need to be a certified mechanical engineer with over 10 years of experience in analyzing vibrations. Uh, so what we do is we give the user actionable data. We tell you on the spot, you need to add more oil or you need to replace this bearing. And we are the only ones who do the automatic diagnostics today. And you're doing it through the cloud? Yeah, exactly. So as I mentioned, we have we connect a vibration sensor to your smartphone, right? So uh, basically, the technician walks up to a machine, attaches the sensor with a magnet, starts recording, and the data is sent to our servers where we compare it to the history of uh, this specific machine that is recording but also to similar machines. So we may have seen similar pumps in the past. And we then return the diagnostics entry recommendation back to the smartphone. And are there, can you talk about some companies that are using it, maybe not mentioning names, but some yeah. examples of how it's being used in the field and um, along those lines? Sure, so we're targeting the service companies. The, again, the H, commercial HVAC service companies. We don't want to go around from building to building, door to door selling. And they have the actual technicians that do the repairs. Um, we're currently working with two largest service companies in the US, which are Fortune 100 companies. I can't name them. Um, and we're also starting working with property management companies. And we have the top uh, three the largest uh, property management companies also. So, and so how do you price it? Is it a service, or are you selling hardware, or is it a combination of both? It's a great question. Uh, we started with a combination of both. Um, but gradually, we shifted towards a more, more of a software as a service type model. So we give away the hardware, and we charge either per machine or per technician. So it's a subscription system. And 
when you think about being able to do this predictive maintenance on these products, where do you see this world evolving to over time now that you can predict when um, my hot water heater blew up uh, last week on the worst day possible? I wish I had this capability um, um, in, in advance. Uh, how do you see the world evolving with this capability? So initially, you know, we're starting with a handheld device that connects to a smartphone. But we're already working on the next product, which is a continuous monitoring platform, where you take the sensor, put it on the machine, and you get continuous feedback and notifications. But our goal at the end is to work with the manufacturer. So the next time you purchase a chiller or a washing machine, it will come with augury inside. And when that happens, it enables, uh, when, when, when you get continuous monitoring, it enables the, the manufacturer to seek other types of revenue so that he can sell more services now. And we see it starting in the very high-end markets. As an example, Rolls-Royce stopped selling jet engines. They started selling flight hours, right? So it's more of a flight as a, as a service. And in order to do that, they basically became an insurance company. And they have to have the ongoing monitoring in order to facilitate that. And we see this going downstream. So today, chiller manufacturers are also trying to sell cooling as a service where they become the insurance company. And we gradually see it going down all the way to the washing machine eventually. I will be back to college where I'm renting my washing machine by the load. Um, so it, it, talk about um, your financing, how you've been financed to date, and I think you've got some great investors behind you. Yeah, so we, we took the long way there. Um, when we just started out, uh, we decided that before we bring any invest, external investor, one to prove that technology works and the market actually exists. So we spent the first couple of years uh, fully self-funded. We bootstrapped the company. And then last year, we raised our seed round from First Round Capital. And another uh, New York-based uh, VC named uh, Lair Hippo Ventures also joined. And we just closed our Series A round a couple of months ago, uh, led by Formation 8, and also Pritzker Group Venture Capital. Congrats. And where are you located? Because did this have any impact on being able to attract um, some of the types of investors that you did? So I, I'm located in New York. Uh, our engineering team is in Israel, actually in Haifa, Israel, which is up in track. Um, and I'm in New York. So we have 18 amazing engineers uh, back at home. And we're currently three people in New York. Excellent. Any questions from anybody? OK, great. I think we're we're done. On time. Thank you very much.